Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, and this is Hortides Black 75 Grain Interlock HD SBR Round. The title of the round, the name of the round is a little bit of a mouthful, uh, but what are we looking at is a 223 round that's uh, specifically designed for your short barreled rifles, your SBRs, your 10 and 11 inch uh, by Hornady's own advertisements uh, and information, it's optimized for that length of round. Now this round isn't new, uh, in fact it's a bit of a rebranding from Hornady's uh, law enforcement, Hornady's law enforcement tap SBR round, uh, sometimes touted as a barrier blind round, it's a round that's uh, designed to perform optimally out of the shorter barrel lengths and still provide you with uh, great expansion um, and terminal ballistics uh, despite the shortened length of the rifle's barrel. If you're familiar with the 223 556 family, uh, you know historically the rifle has provided better terminal ballistics with longer barrels, which kind of goes with pretty much any rifle out there. The shorter the barrel, the more you're going to give up in exchange for that shorter barrel length. Why a shorter barrel? Well, everybody's needs are going to be somewhat different. Uh, most people like to use an AR pistol. Uh, or an AR SBR uh, in the 10, 11 inch range for a home defense gun, which is kind of what the, the round is marketed for. Uh, you also see it in use in law enforcement because it gives you increased maneuverability, but you do give up a little bit, uh, like I said, of your, your terminal velocity uh, for, of the round because you're giving basically a shorter barrel length. So in recent history, the past 5, 10, 15 years, you've seen ammunition companies specifically target that barrel length and produce rounds for it, which is a really cool thing because despite some of the disadvantages or the cons to going to a shorter barrel length, there are some distinct advantages, the biggest one being maneuverability. Yes, you can get it done with an 18 or 20 inch rifle, uh, but the tighter the quarters or the, the bigger your concerns are for maneuverability, especially working in a team environment or a home defense situation where you know you've only got you know, 15, 1,600 square feet, because not all of us have 6,000 square feet homes with very wide, spacious, opulent hallways, uh, those shorter barrels can really uh, make life easier. For those people who have concerns such as they have small children or something like that, they still want to run a rifle. Uh, it's much easier to run a 10 or 11 inch rifle one-handed if you've got to scoop up a kid uh, or hold the hand of a child in an emergency situation. And of course, that's getting a little bit off topic and getting into uh, context. Uh, but just focusing specifically on the round, I wanted to pick these up and just see how well they performed. Some interesting things about the interlock round, the HD SBR round, Hornady, Hornady Black. Uh, it has a brass case, which I found a little strange. Uh, I prefer a nickel case, especially in the AR platform for self-defense or duty ammunition, because nickel extracts easier. It doesn't expand to the same degree that brass does, so in the event of a malfunction, it's much easier to clear a malfunction on a nickel-plated or nickel casing than it would be on a brass casing. So just my personal preference, and maybe I've been spoiled by my, my chosen round, which is the gold dot, uh, I like the ability to uh, clear the malfunctions a little bit easier and have uh, a little bit less expansion in those high pressure rounds. But um, there's nothing wrong with brass. Again, brass has been used uh, by the military um, since forever, basically. Uh, so there's no real issue there. I just found it curious that if they, they were touting a specific home defense round that they didn't choose to go with a nickel casing. But uh, that's neither here nor there. It's more of a personal preference issue, but there are some definite advantages to the nickel casing. Now getting into the bullet itself, it is Hornaday's interlock design, which you can you can find out plenty of information about that line uh, that round design online. They use it in uh, a couple different lines of ammunition, but the interlock round is kind of uh, interesting in the fact that it has that solid core um, that aids in expansion through the interlock system. Uh, so it's not going to perform in the same way, or it's not expected to perform or designed to perform in the same way as some of the other rifle rounds out there such as your open tip match or your steel core or tungsten core penetrators that you see from the military. Another interesting feature of the, the interlock round uh, Hornady, Hornady uh, SBR uh, HD interlock 75 grain is the fact that it has dual cantilevers, which should provide for more consistent crimping uh, inside the case neck. Uh, those people who get really geeked out on ammunition designed specifically for loading uh, or probably find that uh, somewhat interesting. For the testing, uh, I'm going to use two different rifle lengths. Uh, because it's optimized for an SBR, I wanted to use uh, two of the two of the most common SBR lengths, and the SBR lengths that are specifically mentioned in some of the marketing uh, that I've seen out there for the round, being a 10 and 11 inch. For the 10 inch category, I'm going to use my SMOS upper, uh, which is a 1 and 7 twist rate. And then for the 11 inch category, I'm going to use my PWS uh, Sage Edition Mark 111 pistol which is a one and eight twist. Uh, I wanted to use two different twist rates. It's not a comparison between the two guns, it's a comparison of the round through two guns. 
Um, but I wanted to use those two twist, twist rates and those two lengths because those are very, very common lengths and twist rates that you see in SBRs and AR pistols. The very first thing I wanted to do was see what the muzzle velocity was like on the round. Even though there's, there's quoted information, I want to check it myself. I got a magneto speed. It's a very accurate uh, magnetometer. So I wanted to put that on both rifles and uh, based on a five round group, see what my average muzzle velocity was going to be out of my 10 and my 11 inch gun. So up first is the 10 inch SMOS. Overall, not bad. The standard deviation is a little higher than I would like it to be, uh, but that's neither here nor there for, for the purposes of, of just looking at strict muzzle velocity. Now, that muzzle velocity is hovering just above what some people would be consider the uh, minimum muzzle velocity to be effective out of uh, an AR for the 223.556 caliber. Now, let's take a look at the muzzle velocity for the PWS. And again, we've got a muzzle velocity hovering just above uh, what would be considered the minimum acceptable muzzle velocity for the 223.556 ramp. Because this ammunition is designed with SBR lengths in mind, uh, the bullet doesn't is not supposed to, anyway, perform the way a traditional round would, like your just standard FMJ or even your penetrator round. So there's supposed to be a degree of expansion uh, that occurs. Um, beyond some of the desirable characteristics of rifle rounds that you see for longer rifles that, that more they're looking for more of that fragmentation pitch and yaw whereas with this round they're looking for it to expand and perform not the same but similar to uh, the performance of a handgun if I can get a handgun's expansion with 2200 feet per second that's going to be a pretty devastating round when you factor in 2200 feet per second is going to give me some of that kinetic energy that's going to give me those temporary wound cavities depending on the round placement on the human form uh, so that's something I'm, I'm definitely interested in uh, as far as performance characteristics in those terminal ballistics. Uh, the initial test I want to do, uh, wanted to do was a baseline, shooting both rifles at four distance, four different distances on 10% calibrated ballistic gel that I use uh, clear ballistics because it's clear. I like my gel to be clear so I can see exactly what I'm looking at. And the opacity, uh, opacity, opacity? of the material doesn't change its overall performance because again it is calibrated 10% ballistic gel which is considered a standard um, for almost everyone in testing ballistic performance of well bullets. So for our baseline performance we're going to shoot from four distances 10 yards, 25 yards, 50 yards, and 100 yards. So let's get started. Up first is the SMOS uh, at 10 yards. See, we had 20 inches of penetration, which is considerable. And the round, uh, while it did expand, it did turn around a little bit. Um, good, consistent wound channel. Uh, so that's actually pretty good performance um, for that distance. Again, there were no barriers, but this is just establishing a baseline performance on gel before we move into testing against uh, clothing and barrier. Now looking at the round through the PWS 11 inch. Twenty inches of penetration with really good expansion. Uh, that's a very, very deep penetration. Wound cavity looks good. Uh, so at uh, ten yards, this round is doing very well. Now let's move it up to twenty-five yards. First up at twenty-five yards is the SMOS. Almost mimicking the performance at ten, we had twenty inches with consistent expansion. Uh, so the round's still doing very well. Now let's move on to uh, PWS at the same distance. So here's the PWS at twenty-five yards. 25 inches with, with reasonable expansion. Now, this was such an aberration from how well the SMOS performed at the same distance, um, and the, the differences between the twist rates and, and the barrel lengths at this distance should be minimal because we're not losing, we're not bleeding off a lot of our velocity. So I went ahead and shot this twice, and I got the same, almost the exact same results uh, within a uh, eighth of an inch. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I was, in fact, getting that there wasn't an aberration and maybe... Um, testing procedures I just wanted to make sure so that's been confirmed with two shots on gel that that was in fact the penetration distance at this distance now let's stretch our legs a little bit and move both guns out to 50 yards so here's the SMOS at 50 yards we had a complete exit 
but a good consistent wound channel. The fact that the, the round can completely exited the available uh, runway, if you will, of ballistic gel, a little troubling. Uh, 50 yards, it's bleeding off of enough of its velocity that it's losing its rifle characteristics and becoming um, a little bit of an over-penetration concern. Now, 50 yards is probably never going to happen inside of a home defense situation, uh, but that's definitely getting into the range outside the um, reasonable performance distance for that round, and, and they sell it as a home, home defense round for a reason. Now, let's see how the PWS did. So here's the PWS at 50 yards. As you can see, we had an exit uh, second block, 31 inches, uh, so its performance was very, very similar uh, to that of the SMOS at the same distance. The, the round yawed considerably, took that, took that turn, and exited to the side of the block. Again, this is a little bit outside the envelope or the expectations of performance for this round. You're still going to get good ballistics if you have to engage somebody, uh, human form, at, at 50 yards, but the round really isn't performing optimally at that distance, nor was it probably intended to ever uh, perform very, very well compared to other rounds at those extended distances. But because we can, now we're gonna stretch it out to 100 yards. First up at 100 yards is the SMOS. Thirty-one inches of penetration with very, very poor expansion, which shows you that the round at that distance, um, we saw this carrying on from 50 yards out to 100, uh, the round's losing the velocity it needs to perform as designed, which is a, a considerable um, concern, could be a concern, depending on what you intend to use this round for. Uh, Thirty-one inches is still really good penetration, but as you can see, the round failed to perform um, as it is designed to perform, and that's because it just lost so much velocity. Now let's check out the PWS. So here's our PWS at 100 yards. Thirty-two inch exit, uh, so full available ballistic gel uh, penetrated every inch we had with an exit. Um, so it's still got the velocity to penetrate that 10% calibrated ballistic gel and, and perform, uh, but it's lost so much of its velocity, uh, I would be willing to bet that if we were able to recover the round, and I looked for it and couldn't find it, uh, that it failed to expand as well, and the wound channel, especially towards the uh, rear of the uh, ballistic gel, shows that its, its wound channel was significantly narrower than what we were seeing at closer distances. So that's our baseline performance, but it doesn't really reflect real life. Uh, ballistic gel is a great medium for, for testing the terminal ballistics of firearms, well, rounds. Um, but we want to be able to simulate some of the possible intermediate barriers that we may encounter in real life. Uh, the FBI uh, being one of the primary sources of information on round performance, they test virtually every round and those results can be found. Uh, on the internet or through trusted sources, especially law enforcement, you may have it made more readily available to you than, than just Googling it up. Uh, everything becomes event uh, available eventually, but some things take more time to leak out. But um, what we're looking at, especially since this round is uh, for a home defense purpose, is I want to look at the home defense protocols or protocols that the FBI uses that uh, would lend themselves better to a home defense purpose uh, and a few others just because we can. So the first thing we're going to look at is heavy clothing, uh, which I'll get into specifically what that is. Then we're going to look at drywall, then we're going to look at plywood. And then just because we can, we're going to look at 20 gauge hot rolled steel, which simulates the door of a car, and our uh, quarter inch laminate glass, which is going to simulate the windshield of a car. Uh, I wanted to throw those two tests in there because vehicle defense is a very real thing, and some people do keep uh, rifles in their cars. Um, likelihood of needing it, debatable. Uh, but sometimes it's better to have something and not need it than need it and not have it. And for those of you who are uh, choosing your own law enforcement duty around and you work in an urban area, that information may be of use to you as well. First up, we're going to look at heavy clothing, which is a very, very real possibility. Uh, people wear heavy clothing uh, based on season or based on uh, intent. Um, and heavy clothing can provide uh, a barrier uh, two round performance. More so with handguns, you see this a lot with handguns where if the clothing is thick enough it can actually fill the expansion cavity of your hollow point and keep the round from expanding as designed, which is something that completely frustrates ammunition designers and they've come up with some very inventive ways to get around it. With a rifle that's not necessarily the concern, 
Um, but it's still a barrier and it still can cause uh, aberrations in round performance. So when you test, you wanna look for a consistency through these types of barriers. For heavy clothing, we're looking at denim um, and fleece and then two different types of cotton, which is commonly the material pack used to simulate uh, a heavy clothing package. Granted, if you're gonna do this testing on your own, as long as you're consistently using the same fabrics, uh, you, you can establish a very good baseline for, for your own uh, edification, if you will, for your own data. Uh, and it's not unreasonably expensive uh, to get into testing on your own. Uh, Clear Ballistics uh, offers uh, pretty much everything you need. And while the initial investment can be uh, three or four hundred dollars for two block gels and, and, and uh, some of the testing uh, media or accessories that you'll need, then you don't have to worry about trusting some random person on the internet. You can test your own ammunition. And I'll talk more about that later. So let's look at how both uh, round, or I should say how the round performed on, out of both guns on heavy clothing. First up, let's check out the SMOS. On heavy clothing, the SMOS achieved 19 inches of penetration with a reasonable tumble and, and pretty decent expansion. Uh, that's good performance. And again, it's just clothing. And people think, oh, clothing's not going to present that much of a barrier. Uh, you'd be surprised how much clothing can um, cause inconsistencies and steal performance away from what otherwise might be considered a good round. For the PWS on heavy clothing, we had 20 inches of penetration with good expansion, good wound channel. Again, both rounds are still performing very, very well, considering um, the fact that they're, they don't have that advantage of barrel length. Uh, so, so far, uh, the Hornaday Black round is looking pretty good. Now we're going to look at drywall. Drywall is one of the most common interior building materials out there. Almost every home in the United States is going to have drywall walls. Uh, the reason we're looking at uh, performance through drywall is the fact that those barriers exist and uh, while one of the rules is you know you don't shoot anything you can't see if someone is partially obscured behind say a door frame um, if I can see some of their body then I can use intuitive reasoning to link the head bone to the body bone if you will and know where the rest of them is or uh, any number of partitions breakfast bars other situations where you may have to shoot through drywall in order to get the hit that you want we want to have reasonable penetration through that intermediate barrier, but we don't have so much penetration that if we miss, the round's gonna exit the house, which is a separate video topic that I'll get to in the future. What we're looking at is standard drywall configuration, which is two uh, half inch pieces of drywall separated by your standard two by four studs, as most houses are constructed. First in line, SMOS performance through our drywall setup. Twenty inches of penetration, decent expansion, and a really good tumble. The wound channel looks really good. Uh, Twenty inches is is good. Uh, we're still keep, keeping consistent uh, with the round's performance for those home defense purposes. You'll notice uh, the 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 round penetrated close to the same distance on heavy clothing. So even this additional media that we've introduced in front of the round at these home defense distances hasn't considerably stolen any of its terminal ballistic properties, and that's a very good thing. Now let's check out the PWS's performance on drywall. 17 inches of penetration uh, with a yaw exit. Uh, overall, uh, wound channel looks really good. Um, the difference in performance between the two rifles could be attributable to barrel length, or it could be attributable to twist rate. Uh, that's definitely a factor for someone who's very more um, collegiate in their approach uh, to ballistics and has equipment that I don't have access to. If I had a, a Phantom high speed, we'd definitely be able to see some more consistent differences. Um, but just looking at drywall performance between the two rounds, or I should say the round between the two rifles, so far, so good. Plywood is another common test because it simulates the exterior uh, paneling of most homes and some of the paneling uh, or doors uh, inside of a home. You're looking at uh, three quarter inch double A fur, which is the plywood medium that I used for this test. Distance is gonna remain the same, same distance that I used uh, for heavy clothing and for the drywall. Now, plywood is considerably more dense than any of the mediums that we've shot so far. So we wanna see if it's going to cause any considerable performance issues with the round uh, between our two barrel lengths. So first up, let's check out the SMOS's performance uh, on plywood. 
Looking at the SMS's performance on plywood, 20 inches of penetration, good wound channel, decent expansion. Um, again, we just shot through drywall and we saw a very similar uh, performance. We shot through uh, heavy clothing, saw a very similar performance. So, so far, while I don't like the term barrier blind, this round is behaving like it doesn't care what I like or don't like. It's performing consistently, consistently now, so far, through three different mediums of barrier. Now here's the PWS performing through plywood as well. 20 inches and a quarter of uh, penetration. Good expansion, good wound channel. Again, the round doesn't care so far what barrier we put in front of it. It's going to continue to perform very, very similar uh, at like distances despite the mediums we've introduced in front of it. So, so far, just from a, from a home defense perspective, this round is performing well. The last two tests we're going to look at are vehicle based in, in I guess, um, inspiration. Uh, two very standardized tests that are used for round performance on vehicle bodies. First one is going to be uh, 20 gauge, two sheets of 20 gauge hot rolled steel placed 3.5 inches apart. Uh, this steel is used to simulate the body of a vehicle, the car door if you will, while one car door is something that you commonly see people, uh, at least in television shows, not so much more in real life, attempt to use for cover instead of just concealment. Uh, so this testing protocol has been something that's been practiced in law enforcement, FBI, and, and other ballistic testing labs um, to see how rounds perform well. Now there's a bunch of stuff in a car door besides just two sheets of metal. Uh, so you can't factor in a round striking um, a crash carriage or an electric window motor or something like that. I like it more for the fact that it also helps simulate uh, density um, and resistance that would be offered from some of the more common appliances you see in homes such as a refrigerator or a stove. Uh, microwave, things like that. So it gives you an idea of how well your round is going to perform on those types of barriers. And it can also simulate um, to a certain degree, give you an idea of performance on how the round would perform against uh, some, some people have metal core doors, especially people who live uh, in certain geographical regions of the country, their front door is probably more likely to be an aluminum or an aluminum sheen, aluminum sheet cover, flashing cover over wood than it is going to be your standard wood core door. First up, SMOS on the 20 gauge hot rolled steel. So on the steel, the SMOS had 15 inches of penetration and it literally exited the block and just stopped right there on the table, which uh, I've seen that happen before, but it's pretty rare. It literally had enough energy to make it out of the block and that was it. It couldn't go any further. As you can see, the round had very, very poor expansion, which is actually pretty common uh, for a lot of rounds when performing through two pieces of 20 gauge steel. So I'm not gonna hold that against the bullet. What this tells me is I can still get a reasonable hit on uh, my bad guy if he's using an intermediate barrier that offers a resistance close to or less than uh, this, this steel that we're using is our, our ballistic medium, our intermediate barrier. That's still pretty good performance considering the amount of energy it takes to penetrate something like steel over plywood or drywall or heavy clothing. 15 inches is still a good number to get for performance, um, even with that barrier. Looking at the PWS's performance through our two sheets of 20 gauge hot rolled steel, we had about 14 and a half inches of penetration, poor expansion, really no expansion, a little bit of fragmentation, a decent amount of tumble, not a bad wound cavity. But again, that's a significant barrier for a round to perform against, especially starting out at the lower end of velocity that that round is capable of through our 10 and our 11 inch guns. I'm very, very happy with the overall performance of the round through that barrier, uh, considering the, well, just the factors of, of, of uh, physics and, and the density of materials and the strength of materials, that round's gonna have to perform, or it's gonna have to be a well-designed round, I should say, to perform well any round through 20 gauge steel. Final test we're going to look at is laminate glass, a uh, quarter inch laminate uh, of the same laminate grade of glass that you find in the windshields of automobiles and in some of the win or the windows, exterior windows that you find in homes. Now for the, for the automobile purpose of this test, it's usually done at a 45 degree and 11 degree angle for a glancing shot both on the actual glass plane itself and to give a slight angle as an offset from the target through the windshield to add two axes of an angle to further complicate the round's performance. Uh, round performance through glass uh, is um, 
well, it's a, it's a topic very near and dear to my heart. It's something I definitely care about, more so with handguns, because you're more likely to, to use your handgun in a self-defense situation inside of a vehicle than you are a rifle, depending on the context of your occupation in life. Uh, but rifle rounds shooting through glass, both out and into glass, is uh, definitely something that you want to be concerned with, even with a rifle round, because it simulates some of the intermediate barriers that you may find not only in your vehicle, uh, but inside your home. So we want to see how the rounds perform through glass. Are they going to be able to um, keep their favorable terminal ballistic performances um, because of the complicated nature that this barrier presents against what you see from some other barriers? So first up, let's check out the SMOS performing through uh, our laminate glass. Our SMOS had 15 inches of penetration, uh, good wound cavity, uh, extreme fragmentation, and very, I wouldn't say extreme, but good uh, deformation of the round. So the round wasn't able to give us that uh, textbook marketing photo expansion that you'd want to see uh, based on the, the desirable characteristics that are built into the round for its terminal ballistic properties. We didn't get that, but we did get reasonable penetration. Um, and reasonable expansion with some fragmentation. And again, anytime you shoot through an intermediate barrier, uh, especially the higher velocity rounds, they're gonna create um, secondary missiles, if you will, out of the media that that barrier is made out of. So they take, when you shoot heavy clothing, they take material inside the wound channel. Uh, when you shoot drywall, they're taking drywall in there, which is super annoying when you're remelting your ballistic blocks. When you shoot steel, they take steel in there, so on and so forth. Uh, shooting through glass, you're gonna take a lot of that particulate with you into uh, your bad guy, uh, which can be a complication factor for him uh, in his future medical endeavors. And finally, here's our PWS performing on our laminate windshield glass. 13 inches of penetration with some pretty extreme fragmentation. A lot of secondaries ended up in that block. I pulled a lot of glass out of that block when I was, when I was uh, reforming, uh, which is a good thing. 13 inches, not as good as, as the, 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 the SMS performed arguably for, for uh, penetration wise. Wound cavities were very, very similar. 13 inches through windshield glasses, I, I, I would like to consider that to be pretty good performance. Um, it's not ideal. I would like to see 15, 16 inches. Uh, I would like to see, you know, that uh, 15, 16 inches um, be, you know, considerable across a wide degree of intermediate barriers. But f because the round is being fired out of uh, an SBR, uh, 10 inch, 11 inch respectively, now we are seeing, um, what I think to be the best performance you're gonna get out of current technology um, for those barrel lengths, that grain weight, uh, at the velocity that you're capable of producing safely uh, with that barrel length. So if I'm gonna look at this round for a strictly home defense purpose or general purpose round, it's not a bad round at all. Uh, Hornady really did this really, really well when they uh, released it originally as the, uh, the 75 grain tap round for the SBRs for law enforcement purposes. I don't know if any changes were made to the design before they branded it as Hornady Black. Uh, speaking of branding, um, the packaging's a little on the nose, uh, but I mean, again, uh, it's gonna appeal to some people more than others. I don't really need my box of ammunition to have like a subdued sheen American flag with the don't tread on me f uh, f snake and, and don't step on snake and all that. But uh, overall, it's on, what on the, what's on the inside of the box that counts. And if you are looking for a round specific for SBRs, because there aren't a whole lot of them out there, this is a round that you should definitely check out. Uh, I found its accuracy to be really good. Uh, velocity is really good and as you can see through the gel testing that we did both the control testing baseline testing and then our testing on some of the more common intermediate barriers uh, round performs very very well for for considering the length of the barrel it's coming out of so if you're gonna ask me if the Hornady Hornady uh, 75 grain interlock HD SBR round is good to go I'm gonna give it a big thumbs up uh, it's definitely something you should check out if you're looking to switch over uh, from your current ballistic round now Mentioned it earlier, I'm gonna bring it up again. Uh, if you're serious about rounds and you're serious and, and ballistics is something that interests you, don't take the internet's word for anything. Uh, be willing to invest a little bit of extra money, uh, save up you know, $20, $30 a month or, or whatever your budget allows for uh, to buy your own ballistic gel. It's not that big, really complicated scientific thing that the average person can't have access to anymore. Clear Ballistics and another, uh, many other companies offer 
um, ready-made ballistic gel that's pre-calibrated and they give you really specific instructions for how to reuse the gel. Uh, the blocks that I have, they have started to experience some discoloration from multiple remelts, but the calibration remains true and consistent. I'm able to continue to use these blocks for multiple ballistic tests. Uh, and while my initial investment for uh, as many blocks as I have was kind of high, if you're buying for own personal purposes, two blocks are going to allow you to test almost every small arm ammunition you're going to get, especially if you're using it through intermediate barriers. Uh, and the information for how to set up testing protocol is available online as well. So if you want to follow what the FBI does or follow what somebody else does for some sort of standardized testing and give yourself an appreciable metric for the round that you choose, uh, it's really not that complicated to do it. Uh, really the hardest part is going to be finding a range where you can shoot and actually shoot ballistic gel because you probably you haul this stuff into your local indoor range and they're probably not going to let you do anything with it. Uh, you can grab a couple friends, your shooting buddies, get together, um, throw in on it, and go out on a weekend and, and test the, uh, the rounds that you choose. Never trust, without verification, the claims that a manufacturer makes on their round. Uh, and this is why, you know, I made this video. I, I test ballistics pretty frequently, but I don't always film it. And the reason I don't film it is because, as you can see, how many times I had to shoot this, how many rounds were fired, how many ballistic gel blocks were used, how many mediums were set up. These are very, very labor-intensive videos, and while I do like to give you guys good content, sometimes they, it becomes needlessly complicated in the production of a video. So you're not going to see a whole lot of these just because of the production time that goes into them, and I'm pretty busy already. Uh, if I was just a YouTube channel, then I would do nothing but this because I find this super fascinating. But I have to travel multiple times a month to classes and teach, and then I have administrative stuff doing work, contract classes to do during the, during the week. Uh, so it's just not feasible for me to always be able to do these. But anytime a new round comes out that makes ridiculous claims, I'm probably going to get a hold of it and see if it's telling the truth. So, before you trust a round, verify that its performance is similar to what the manufacturer is telling you it's capable of doing. Because sometimes they're literally just selling you snake oil. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.